This video in the exercise series is all about those hard to reach areas of the sax. So I'm talking about the palm keys, the upper range of the instrument or the lower range of the instrument, all of that little finger work that needs to go in down there. And I'm going to introduce some ideas of creating your own exercises, but also pointing you in the right direction of some material that already exists that is going to help you massively in this area. The first thing that I want to talk about is the importance of support. Now, it is going to be a little bit trickier to get your fingers around these more extreme parts of the instrument. And when I'm talking about the extreme parts of the instrument, I'm talking about the palm keys and the lower stack. We call this the lower stack. This is where our little finger sits on the sax. So the palm keys, which are with your left palm, and the lower stack here, which is with your left little finger. We do have to bring in our right side keys and also our right little finger as well. Uh, but they should be a little bit more familiar to us. Using these keys and using these keys should be a little bit more familiar to us than using just the palm keys or just this lower stack with our left finger here. We are going to have to get used to using our fingers in these different areas and the combination of using these fingers is something that's quite tricky. But the most important thing when we're playing these ranges of the instrument is support. Now that's the one thing that usually disappears. When we start playing these extreme ranges of the instrument, we sometimes come back on the support and that is what usually affects that sound. As soon, and then we're in a spiral downwards. As soon as our sound is affected, we don't push as much air in. And as soon as we don't push as much air in, our sound is affected and it's just a knock-on effect for this extreme parts of the instrument. The, we call them the extreme parts of the instrument because when we're playing the palm keys, we're only playing that much of the instrument. That's a very, very small bit of tube to get a decent sound out of. The opposite is playing the full part of the instrument. We are playing when we're playing these bottom notes, the bottom B, bottom B flat, we're using all of that tube. So we can see straight away, we're going to need a lot more air and a lot more support to get the sound out of the end of the instrument. I'm going to link that idea of support to an exercise that we should be doing all the time. And that's long notes. Now long notes are pretty boring. Okay, they are going to be uh, that part of your practice session that you think, oh, I'll do five minutes and then that's that. I would urge you to try and find some interesting ways of doing this. So whether that's putting a metronome on and playing a little game with, I'm going to play for so many beats and then breathe for so many beats. and Just getting used to that idea of pushing that amount of air into the instrument all of the time. Always concentrating, and I think this is the most important thing, always concentrating on making a great sound all the time making a brilliant sound all the time. That's the main thing of these long notes. And what I would say is if you have only got five minutes to spend on long notes, and very often we have in a practice session, we're just grabbing 10, 20 minutes here and there to just keep that practice more sustained throughout the week. I would urge you to spend those five minutes that you might have on long notes spread around the range of the instrument. So by all means, when you first start playing the instrument, choose some nice easy notes that you're gonna play. Choose a B, choose an A, choose a G, one of these notes that's easy to get out. And you're just going to play some nice long notes. I wasn't necessarily thinking of playing for any particular time. I was focusing really, really a lot on that sound. It is the first thing I've played today on this might realize I'm dressed in black. I've got soprano in my hand, which isn't usual. I have actually got a gig coming up at lunchtime today. So I thought I'd spend the time getting my sound on my sock going. And I would move that around the range now. So I've chosen a nice, easy to reach sound in the middle of the instrument. Nice, easy B. Not too sure I was happy with the sound of that, but it's the first thing I've played today. I would then move around the range. So I'd probably play that a couple of more times for a couple of minutes, just a long B for as long as my breath will allow me bring the note up to a nice end, and then start it again. And maybe do that, I don't know. I would probably put a timer on actually, do it for however long I've got, split this time, uh, part of my practice session into three or four parts, depending on how many notes I'm gonna play. And then I'm gonna choose an extreme part of the instrument. When I say extreme, I'm gonna say anything lower, maybe lower than an E. So D and down from at the lower part of the instrument. I'm gonna choose a low C, I'm gonna choose a low C. A 
And again, I'm always thinking about that support. I'm looking for that nice, strong sound, but I'm looking for a good sound right from the very start. If I've not got that support, the sound is not going to come out. And then I'm going to go to the other extreme. Bearing in mind, I'm totally rushing through this little part here just to give you an idea of what I would suggest you practice. I'm going to go to the top of the instrument. So the upper range, the extreme range at the top of the instrument. And I would say that's anything that involves your palm keys. So anything above a C sharp. Um, I'm going to choose an E flat. The sound's going through all sorts of strange things. I don't know if that's being picked up in the mic, but in the room, that sounds really, really strange. So it has been a while since I've played the SOP, which is one of the reasons why I've just got it out today, because I've got a gig on it coming up uh, later on today. That's what I would say. Split your instrument into three parts. The more comfortable range of the instrument, which are the, the notes that I guess that we play more often than others. When we play our scales, we more than off, more often than not play maybe over one octave, maybe to a twelfth, depending on what we're going to be, uh, what we're expected to do. Maybe you're preparing for some sort of exam. I would then suggest that you push it to the bottom of the instrument. So instead of playing in the middle of the instrument, you play it to the bottom of the instrument. Just some long notes at the, down at the bottom. If you've got time, choose two or three of those. The more, the better. You know, the, the more successful long note parts of my uh, practice come from playing the whole range of the instrument. Just nice long notes on every single note of the instrument, just moving chromatically up or chromatically down. But if you have not got long, one note in the middle, one note at the bottom, and one note at the top that uses these palm keys. The next thing I'm going to talk about that's going to improve your overall range on the instrument and get used to these extreme ranges at the top and the bottom of the instrument are full range scales. Now I think these should be used a lot more than our usual scale over one octave to a twelfth or over two octaves because it brings in the top of the instrument and the bottom of the instrument on every single scale. Now if you're not sure about what full range scales are, let me just explain that to you quickly. What it is, and I'm going to give you an example here. I'm going to play a C major scale. Usually we would start our C major scale on the bottom C. We would then go up maybe two octaves to a top C and then come back down and finish on our bottom C. Now a full range scale goes past that top C and goes past the bottom C. So what I'm going to do is when I get to the very top C, I'm going to keep going in the key of C major. So I'm just going to play my naturals. I'm going to play C, palm key D, top E top F and that's the top of the instrument in C major and then I'm going to come all the way back down the instrument in C major get to the bottom C and then fill in whatever note I can play at the very bottom of the instrument and in C major it means we go down to a bottom B. So let me show you what that sounds like. This is C major full range. <laughs> play full range on every single scale, it forces us to the top of the instrument and it forces us to the bottom of the instrument on every single scale. Now you'll realize that in every single key we either have a top F or a top F sharp or it might be called a G flat. In every single scale or every single key we always have a bottom B or a bottom B flat. That means in every single scale that we play full range we play a top F or an F sharp or we play a bottom B or a B flat. Now that's going to massively improve the way that you play uh, the top of the instrument at the bottom of the instrument because it becomes more familiar. And now this is the really in interesting thing. When something becomes more familiar, we think it becomes easy. It doesn't become any easier. It means that we've done it a little bit more. Why do you think the middle notes of the instrument we see as the easy notes to play? It's because the ones that we probably started playing when we first started playing the saxophone. They are just more familiar, not more easy, they're not easier than any other note on the instrument, it's just putting a finger down on the instrument and blowing air into an instrument. The idea of making these notes more comfortable, usually it means that we're making them more familiar. The more familiar we get these notes, the, the easier they then get. The other thing to mention here as well is that there are usually only a couple of different combinations of these notes at the top of the instrument and the bottom of the instrument. I would suggest that you sit down and you work them out. You write them down, not necessarily in musical notation, but maybe just the letters and you work out how many different combinations have I got of the, 
the scale at the top of the instrument and the scale at the bottom of the instrument, you'll find that there aren't actually too many. So you could just spend your time practicing those different combinations of notes at the top of the instrument and notes at the bottom of the instrument. Now suggesting repertoire or suggesting exercise books is always a really tricky thing because everybody's at different levels, everybody's at different stages of playing. The best thing I can say that you can do is make up your own. Not only is it a lot of fun to make up your own little uh, compositions even that incorporate these different parts of the instrument that you find a little bit trickier or we find they're a little bit more hard to reach, then just make up your own. One of the, the, the best ways to do it is uh, maybe a chromatic scale just at the top of the instrument. Just moving up and down chromatically at the top of the instrument there, you're going to get used to that combination of fingers at the top and you're going to concentrate on that nice strong sound at the top of the instrument, which is tricky to get when you're only playing that much of the instrument. Find the areas of the instrument that you're not comfortable with and focus on them. It's so important that our practice sessions are filled with the things that we can't do, not with the things that we can do. Because we're practicing the things that we can't do to make them better. So if you're struggling at the bottom of the instrument, start off with some long notes, playing some long notes at the bottom of the instrument, and then incorporate some finger work. And this is where the, the creative part of a practice session might come in. Make up your own little exercises. Even if to start with, that exercise is just moving between a bottom C and a bottom B. Something as simple as that is likely to make a huge difference in your ability to play those bottom notes and the comfort that you feel playing those bottom notes. One of the most important books I think in uh, the saxophone playing is this one here, Saxophone High Tones by Eugene Rousseau. I don't, I don't know if they're still on the second edition, this is quite an old uh, version of this book that I've got now, but the material in it is still exactly the same. I would say go out and get this book if you're at a certain level. Now this is all about reaching the extended range of the instrument, so that above the top F sharp of the instrument. But there is a lot in this book that is actually really useful for just becoming more comfortable with the top of the instrument. So those palm keys, bridging that gap between um, no fingers being on the instrument, the top C sharp, and then bringing in those palm keys. There are also some brilliant scale exercises in here that you could incorporate. Some of them take you up into the altissimo range of the instrument but a lot of them are written at range of the instrument that you're able to get so this is a brilliant book maybe not for a total beginner maybe not even for someone maybe grade five six or seven i would say those who are around grade eight now and really want to work in a lot more detail on their sound at the top of the instrument this is certainly the book to get because it bridges that gap between the upper range of the instrument and then creeping into that altissimo and incorporating that uh, extended range, that altissimo range into our normal uh, daily routine. So scales suddenly then become not constricted by the range of the instrument, but we push them past that full range of the instrument, the top F and top F sharp, and it becomes a lot more comfortable then to play the, uh, the upper range of the instrument, so the, the altissimo range. This book here, I cannot tell you where I got it from, probably some charity shop, um, or I don't know where it was from, um, but this book is full of really, really interesting uh, little exercises, actually. Uh, I'll just show you a couple here. I'll just, I've opened it up on a random page. Look at that, so we can see some extreme range exercises there. They're linked to some harmonic uh, ideas in there as well. But this is just, what I'm trying to get at here is that it doesn't matter where you get your inspiration from. Find any book, find something and, and, and turn it into your own little exercise routine. Find something that is going to inspire you to work on these parts of the instrument that you're not comfortable playing. Um, some other books that I've just got out here, uh, The Art of Playing the Saxophone, the, the Larry Teal book, um, uh, the Londex book, Playing the Saxophone, um, uh, hello Mr. Sax. All of these books are books that I've collected over the years and I'm not saying that I sit down and read them cover to cover. I might 
read them if I'm looking for something specific, maybe my teaching, and I want to incorporate something else and just back that up with some other theory from the, the great saxophone educators uh, of the past and the present. But I'm finding just that little bit of inspiration. I might find a just a snippet of an exercise and think, oh, that's brilliant. I'm going to use that in my practice. I chuck it on the music stand and I just play that. That's all I've used out of that book. So find your inspiration from everywhere. It might even be in a, a favorite piece of music that you've got, your favorite um, repertoire that you've worked on. Maybe you're working on some music for a grade that's coming up or a performance that's coming up. Use the music that you enjoy playing because what you could do is you found a little snippet of music that you really enjoy playing. Well, have you ever tried playing that up an octave? Have you ever tried playing that down an octave if your instrument allows? Well, try it and do it. You might end up finding a brilliant little exercise, a little finger workout that you both really enjoy playing, you enjoy the sound of, but it's then improving your technique. So what I would say is by all means, go out and buy the books, find the books and um, buy the suggestions that people have online or that music shops have, but use them how you want to use them. So find your own inspiration, find your own corners of these books and use them because believe me, you could get so much more um, out of just a single book um, and just be a little bit more creative. Find other ways of doing it. Don't just rely on what other people are telling you. Create your own exercises. Find your own um, struggles and your, the, your own difficulties within different parts of the instrument and then work on them. Find a little exercise that's going to help you that will help you improve your all-round playing.